Hello everyone. Today I'm gonna to go over how to create risks in mostly in Azure DevOps, but I will also touch on Trello and a couple other ways that you can track risks in your current system that you're using for development. In a previous video, I talked about how important risks are, so today we're gonna to go ahead and talk about how to develop a way of tracking risks in your current system. Now, there are a couple different ways to track risks in Azure DevOps. I would suggest if you're brand new and you don't really have the buy-off from your management team, I would go ahead and start either tracking risks in user stories or tasks. Um, in my particular organization, we've decided to go one step further and actually create a risk item, which you can definitely do if you are an admin for your Azure DevOps um, project but I do suggest that you talk to your management and get buy-in from everyone because you don't want to start creating work items that hardly anybody's going to use or only one person is going to use because it can start getting your Azure DevOps quite messy. So first, I want to show you guys how I would go ahead and track them if I was only going to use a user story. So once you're in your particular project, you can go ahead and go to boards and go to backlog. And I would suggest first start tracking your uh, risks at the user story level. So a um, couple different ways that you could go ahead and do this without having a lot of change to your current Azure DevOps layout is you can go ahead and start your new work item, select your user story. Um, let's just call this one budget risk. Hit add to the top. And so now you've got a user story called budget risk. Let's go ahead and open that. So now that we're here, you would have to kind of agree upon it uh, as a group to figure out, okay, well, how are we going to use a user story to uh, track risks? The first thing I would do is probably agree upon a tagging convention and a naming convention. Probably the naming convention first is probably the most important. So what I would do is I'd probably just type in risk, dash or colon, and then that should be this designator for all of these user stories that are actual risks that you're tracking for the project. And then another thing you, that you can do to try to differentiate your user stories from actual risk user stories is actually using the tag feature. A lot of different systems like Trillo and um, other things like Pivotal Tracker have a tagging system already built in, and that's very useful to kind of try to differentiate um, different work items from, say, requirements, from risks, from different things in different parts of releases. So um, a simple thing is just go ahead and click the uh, risk icon to start a risk, and then you just go ahead and type in risk. And then you click out of it, and now you actually have labeled this thing as a risk. Um, another thing that you can do is start um, putting in some sort of templates in, 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 in these items to kind of help you capture the different things that you want to go ahead and capture for your risks for your company or for your project. Now, as you can see, I've added in a few categories that I believe that's going to be most useful for starting out to track risks. These are some of the categories that we follow or fields that, that we follow when we're trying to track risks in my particular company. Um, first thing is the type of risk. This would be whether it's internal or external. Uh, sometimes when you're a project manager and you're dealing with external clients, you may want to actually call out a risk early internal to kind of get buy-off from your rest of your team to actually make sure that that is a true risk. And then you might want to flip it over to external once the client knows about it. Risk category, this would be um, if it was a budget risk, a scope risk, um, a manpower risk, you know, resources, um, risk level. This is where you would actually want to go ahead and put in your urgent, high, medium, and low uh, risk levels. And that's dependent on what, what is the likelihood that this is actually going to impact the uh, project negatively. Um, another thing that you can do, since I'm showing you how to use a user story to um, build a risk, you can go ahead and use the priority section here that already comes with uh, Azure DevOps. Priority ones would be urgent, high, medium, and low. Um, next thing that you'd want to do is have a description. Uh, what is the risk? You know, uh, 
you know, kind of give a little bit, I would keep this short, uh, maybe one or two sentences of what exactly is going on. Impact, what is the impact that's going to happen to the project if this actually actually happens to the project? Is it going to go over budget? Is the client going to be unhappy? Um, is the project going to fail? Those things. Um, the, the last thing that I would say that you need to track in a risk, um, and there's many different things that you can track in risks, but I think probably these are some of the main ones. The last one would be the risk mitigation plan. And it's really up to you if you want to put it up here in description or acceptance criteria. I just decided to put it here in the acceptance criteria. Um, so the risk mitigation plan. So this is where you would actually either talk internally or talk with the client and actually come up with some mitigation plans. If uh, things are moving kind of slow and you guys are not completing user stories as fast, well, what is causing that? What's the, what's the bottleneck? And so maybe one of the bottlenecks is there's too many meetings. Well, mitigation, you know, one of the mitigation plans to this should be um, less meetings. Maybe another problem is the user stories were not scoped correctly. So another mitigation plan would be rescope user stories. And when I say rescope user stories, it could be as simple as break them down further, get better acceptance criteria, maybe even different story pointing, because now that you are further into the project, you understand the project a little bit better and you may need to continually review and rework your user stories as you move forward. So now that we've talked about some of the things that you should be putting into your user story, we can go ahead and show you how maybe best way to track it uh, throughout your sprint. So now that I've actually put in an iteration path and saved it, I can go ahead and close the user story and go into a current sprint. System's gonna load up. So now I actually have my user story here in the sprint. Uh, before I paused the video recording, it didn't show here, so I had to go into the backlog to kind of see where it was sitting and then move it into the appropriate um, sprint just so that you guys can see this. So now we actually have the title risk, but you know, budget risk, um, the tag is risk, and you can do a couple different things to kind of make this stand out. Um, one of the things that you can do is if things are labeled as risks with the tag risk, you can go here into the um, configuration and go into styles and add styling rules. So maybe you want one to be risk, right? And then so if the field tags contains risk, right, let's change it a red color because risks are important. Click save and close. Refresh the board and see now that this is differentiated from anything else on your board because now it's going to have a, a, a particular color. Now you can do this with a lot of different systems. Uh, Trello is another one that I have up right now. Uh, you can actually track risks in your board or have it in a totally separate board. It's totally up to you. Um, so I made a, 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 a project card area named uh, budget risk, right? And so now that I have that, you can start adding in cards. I would suggest use some of the same fields that I showed you um, building out a user story risk. In this card, you always wanna have what the impact is, what type of risk it is, what definitely the risk level, because someone needs to know exactly how much is this gonna impact the project if it actually happens. And finally, a mitigation plan. And since we're talking about you can start with internal risks and then move it out to external, as soon as you're ready to move it out to external risks, I say that you go ahead and bring it right up to the client. Let them know. But before you do that, make sure that you actually have a mitigation plan ready to show them and then they can add to. The worst thing you can do is come with a, with a medium to high risk and not have anything in there. So I do suggest that you fill out some of these other items that we were talking about in the user story into your risk here in, in Trello or wherever you may be tracking it, and then uh, make sure you talk through it with the client. 
So for sake of time, I went again, uh, went ahead and copy and pasted the um, different sections that we talked about uh, previously in the user story into this card here in Trello. And uh, another thing, like I said, a lot of these um, different tracking systems actually have built-in labels or different labels of color. Those are the best things to do to kind of help differentiate if you don't actually have a specific risk item built into your system. Um, that's a good way to kind of keep these things separate from actual business requirements or anything else that you're tracking in, in your system. So as you can see, I went ahead and put in all this information and go ahead and click save. Um, that's going to add to um, this area here. Um, and then, of course, we can always add another one. Um, you know, let's just say there's a scope risk. You know, the client keeps coming up with too many, um, you know, too many requirements that weren't originally in, in the original scope. So um, you can go ahead and fill this in here um, and then go ahead and tag it. So um, right now I'm using editing labels. So you can go ahead and color code it. It's a scope risk, right? So you just go right back in here, add in those different fields, um, copy and paste, and then go ahead and fill in your risk. Um, there are countless numbers of ways to be able to track risks in your system. These are just a few. I just wanted to go ahead and give you guys a few examples since we talked about risks the other week um, of ways that you can go ahead and do it yourself within your system without a lot of uh, modification to Azure DevOps or whatever system that you are using. Now, if, you're, if you do choose to actually go the route and create an actual work item called risk, Azure DevOps and a lot of these systems do have that ability to go ahead and create those things. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to our dashboard here because this is gonna be the quickest way to show you one of our risk items. So right now I have a query that shows all of the risks for all of our projects here at our company. I'm gonna go ahead and select this and go ahead and uh, click on one of these risks here. So as you can see, we've actually created a risk item and have all of the different items that we were just talking about for the user story put into this actual work item. And they're all different drop downs that you can select from and uh, change the different priority levels if it's external or internal risk. And since it is an actual risk item, now I don't have to deal with tags. It's all just right there and I can just go ahead and query on all the different risks. But like I said, make sure to check with your company first and make sure that this is going to be a benefit to all of your projects throughout your company um, before you go ahead and start modifying um, any of the different systems that you guys may be using. So that's it everyone. Thank you so much for um, visiting. Uh, make sure if you guys like what I'm putting out to give me a like, give me some comments down below. If you guys want to know a little bit more of how to actually build a risk work item, I can create a video on that. Also, if you like my information that I'm putting out, please subscribe. Uh, let me know that I'm doing a good job. Till next time, thank you everyone.